Well, there's somebody else's notes here. <laughs> and Bill's timer. <laughs> uh, I won't uh, refer to either of those. Uh, I'm tempted uh, to revise and extend the re remarks of those who have spoken before, but I will uh, resist that temptation uh, except for a few points of clarification. Uh, first, Farmer Bob does not get subsidies. Uh, <laughs> Farmer Bob's soybeans are in Canada, and there are no uh, subsidies of that sort. Uh, second, uh, if the picture that uh, Barney Frank referred to were in color, uh, you would realize that my taste in ties is even worse uh, <laughs> than it appeared to be in black and white. But there are extenuating circumstances. I'm colorblind. Okay, so that's um, third. Uh, the story of the skunk is really a very complicated one in which the uh, Washington Post editorial board uh, decided to write this editorial and give me a mechanical skunk, uh, which had CBO on its tail, uh, and it uh, had batteries, and you turned it on, and it squeaked and went forward, and then it raised its tail and shot backwards. Uh, and uh, I still have in my study at home the uh, certificate that Meg Greenfield wrote in Latin uh, appointing CBO as the skunk, except the skunk is a new world animal, and so there was no word for skunk in Latin. So that was the educational part of my remarks. <laughs> um, uh, then then uh, finally, uh, uh, to clarify, uh, Pete, uh, Sure. <laughs> uh, just one. <laughs> uh, to clarify uh, Pete Domenici's uh, comment about my hair, uh, it actually not only began falling out uh, and turning gray at the same time, and he just mentioned that it was turning gray. So uh, health reform uh, is uh, dangerous to uh, your health. Uh, let me start by uh, thanking NASI and all of you who have uh, uh, come through the heat and humidity and traffic uh, to be here, really to show your support for this uh, very important organization. Uh, it's particularly gratifying to look around this room and see that there are so many of you who have been my colleagues at uh, the Urban Institute, at uh, Brookings, at CBO, or have served with me on various commissions and panels, uh, for you should rightly uh, think that a portion of this award uh, really represents the work that you've done uh, and we've done together. Uh, some say that when you receive an award like this, a uh, prestigious award, it can bump up the way the rest of the world looks at you and open up new opportunities for you. Uh, no, it's not the opportunity to say something dumb, uh, which uh, Bob referred to. I've been a little skeptical about that uh, theory uh, until this morning when I came in and flipped on my computer uh, and read uh, the following email from somebody named Emily Rogers. Dear Rob, <laughs> knows me well, clearly. <laughs> when looking to purchase an aircraft, <laughs> Don't get caught up in a sleek image or a sexy advertising campaign. Ask the right questions before signing on the dotted line. Find out what the right questions are, and then there's a link to a little booklet, which I read, called <laughs> How to Make an Investment to be Proud of, the seven key questions to ask before uh, an aircraft purchase. Um, <clears throat> Well, that this was a new opportunity because I've been getting over the years these um, emails saying, do you want to rent a piece of an airplane, you know, to travel around in as president of the Urban Institute? Uh, and now here I was off being offered purchase, whole purchase. Well, I, I sort of thought about this for uh, a little while, and then I studied the seven questions, and I noticed that they all had to do with adequacy, dependability, 
security, financial stability, and service. And I realized that this was really an allegorical message about social insurance. <laughs> warning, warning me not to sign on the dotted line to support any entitlement reform that was proposed without checking the nasty website first. <laughs> uh, let me get serious. <laughs> it's going to be tough. Uh, it really is an understatement to say that I'm uh, deeply honored uh, and humbled by this award. And uh, that's the case really for three reasons. And the first and foremost of these is that to be associated in any way with the life and work of Bob Ball is an incredible honor. All of you who knew Bob recognized that he was an exceptional role model for all of us who have striven to craft and improve public policy in rational, deliberative, and evidence-based ways. He was a tireless supporter for and a defender of the programs he believed in, namely Social Security and the other core social insurance programs. Nevertheless, he recognized that demographic, economic, and social developments required that these programs change over time. He was Im imaginative in his search for solutions, and I, and I'm sure many of you in this room, have thick folders of all of the innumerable iterations of Bob's plans on how to strengthen Social Security. Uh, amazing outpouring of... Uh, suggestions of how we could uh, get through the uh, fiscal challenges and at the same time uh, preserve and strengthen the support for the elderly, the disabled, uh, and survivors. He was pragmatic, but he was uncompromising when it came to core principles. He was able, as few uh, in succeeding generations have been, uh, to communicate in clear and simple ways uh, very complex ideas. Uh, and he was a straight shooter who was trusted by policymakers on both sides of the aisle. He was exceptionally generous with his time. He was willing to share his wisdom, his insights, his experience to educate younger groups of researchers and policy analysts. When he did uh, comment on uh, proposals or papers or ideas that you had. He was unfailingly polite and gracious as he patiently explained why your latest bright idea wouldn't work, was misguided, was woefully inadequate, <laughs> or violated some core principle. Uh, if none of these were the case, you usually found out that Bob had come up with the same idea a decade or two before. <laughs> The second reason uh, why I'm honored and humbled uh, by this award is the list of others who've rec been recognized uh, since the award was established in 2003. I've learned a great deal from every one of them. I've collaborated with most of them on one project or another, and I've, I, and I've turned to them for advice and counsel over the 42 years that I've been in Washington working on social insurance issues. Finally, uh, I'm humbled because NASI is the sponsor of this award, and it's such a remarkable organization dedicated uh, to such a critical mission. Over the past 26 years, Pam and NASI's small but highly effective staff have worked hard to ensure that there's a civil and informed discussion of the challenges that face the social insurance programs that are so important to our country, and that a balanced debate uh, occurs about the options that are available for meeting these challenges. Over the course of the next few years, our elected representatives will be making critical decisions that will shape the future of these programs probably for decades into the future. With all of your support and all of your continued engagement with NASI, those decisions will be wise ones that strengthen the core values and principles that have been the foundation upon which our system of social insurance rests. Thank you very much for this honor. Let, let me offer a toast 
Thanasi. What? Okay, you can talk now. Okay. <laughs> God, my former colleagues here <laughs> turning on me. Uh, tenacity and to a sensible future for social insurance. Yeah.